Continuing on from the previous lesson, there is another patterning tool you should be aware of, and that's called the Curve Driven Pattern Tool. Curve Driven Patterns allow you to replicate instances of the C geometry along a curve, an edge, an entire sketch, or a single selected sketch entity. In this lesson, you will learn how to use the Curve Driven Pattern Tool to pattern this hex cutout along the perimeter of this part. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's begin the lesson. Just like the Sketch Driven Pattern Tool, we first need some reference geometry to drive the pattern path. Since we want to pattern this cutout around the perimeter of the part, we'll first create a sketch and copy the contour of the perimeter, and then that can be used for our Curve Driven Pattern. To begin, we'll start a sketch on this top face of the part by clicking on the top face and going to Sketch. To select this outside perimeter, we could use the Convert Entities tool, which we will use, but to make our selection process easier, what we can do is just pick one of the lines of that perimeter, right click on it, and go to Select Tangency. This way it will select the entire tangent line that we need for our outside perimeter and we can then go to Convert Entities, and we have created our perimeter sketch. By using the Convert Entities tool, we also create sketch entities with an on-edge relation, meaning if this part was to ever change dimensions or size, our sketch contour would follow that and update automatically with any changes. This is all we need for our reference geometry, so we can go ahead and exit the sketch and Control 7 to go back to an isometric view. We might also rename this sketch to make it a little easier to select it later on. You can rename the sketch by right clicking on it and going to Rename Tree Item. And we are just going to call this Pattern Path. So this is just gonna make it a little clearer for us later on. We are now ready to launch our Curve Driven Pattern Tool. So this can be accessed in two ways, either in the top menu, go to Insert, Pattern Mirror, and then Curve Driven Pattern, or on the Features tab of the Command Manager, look for the Linear Pattern and click on the arrow to expand that tool and go to Curve Driven Pattern. Once the tool is activated, you should see all the options in the Property Manager on the side. As mentioned at the start of the lesson, the pattern direction for a Curve Driven Pattern can be either a curve, an edge, an entire sketch, or a single selected sketch entity. And this first selection box is for selecting that pattern path. In some occasions, it may automatically select something for you. If this is the case and it's not the correct selection, you can just right click on it and go to clear selections. So with that cleared and the selection box activated, we can now pick our path. If you select one of the segments of the sketched contour, you'll notice it's only picking that segment of the path which isn't what we want. So if we just right click on that and delete, you actually want to select the sketch through the feature manager tree. So making sure the selection box is highlighted, click on our pattern path, which is the sketch we renamed, and this way it will select the entire contour for us. We will look at the other options in a moment, but go down to the bottom of this property manager to where it says features and faces. For curve driven patterns, you can select either features, faces, or entire bodies. In this case, we want to select a feature as it's just a simple cut feature. So have the feature selection box activated, and then you can either click on this feature by just clicking on it like this way, or you can click on it in the feature manager tree. Once you've selected your path and the feature that you want to pattern, you should see a preview of the pattern in the graphics window. So let's go back up to the top of the property manager and take a look at the other options and start adjusting the parameters to suit the pattern we want. If the pattern is going in the wrong direction, you can click on this reverse direction button like that, or you can click on the arrow in the graphics window. So make sure the preview should be showing the pattern in this direction. You can either set the pattern spacing manually, or you can use the equal spacing option to have the instances evenly distributed along the pattern direction. Put a check in the equal spacing box and change the number of instances to five. You can also control these parameters through this little pop-up window box here. So you should see in your preview five instances that are spaced evenly along the perimeter. 
But if your preview is looking something like this, where the instances seem to be on the outside of the curve, this is the next option we need to take a look at, which is transform curve and offset curve. So if you see something like this, it obviously isn't correct. You'll want to change it to offset curve, which should bring the patterns to the inside and follow the curve nicely like this. Another option to pay attention to is the alignment method. You have the options of tangent to curve or align to seed. If we change our view to this way, you should see, have a better idea of what these options do. So tangent and curve, you can see the preview. The pattern is going to follow along with the curve. If we change that to align to seed, it's always going to reflect the same direction as the seed geometry. So as the pattern goes around, it's not going to rotate at all. For our exercise, we want the hex to follow along with the tangent of the curve. So we will select the tangent to curve option. And if you zoom out, you should see it looks something more like this. Also, this last instance is going to end up right on the edge, which is most likely not what you want. This is due to the curve length. If you were to do this properly, you might just finish this edge a little sooner as the endpoint is going to reflect the center of that last instance. So what we might do is accept this pattern. And so you can see it's kind of cutting onto that edge and we're going to go back to our pattern path and edit that. So you can click on pattern path sketch and edit sketch. And we need to adjust this line. So we might just delete this line and create a new one. And then we may just to mention this last one to be 10 mils and then exit the sketch. And you can see that our pattern has finished in the correct spot now. So just be aware of the pattern path. You may have to finish it a little early because it is going to be in line with the center of the last instance. Finally, to finish this lesson, I'll show you how to edit an existing curve driven pattern. So all you need to do is go over to the feature manager tree on the side, click on our curve driven pattern and go to edit feature. Then we can make any changes we need to. So for instance, we might need a few more instances so we can change that to seven and then click OK to accept the changes and it should automatically update. So that brings us to the end of this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video and let's move on to the next lesson.